Today we're discussing fish facts, the toxicology and epidemiological aspects of methylmercury and fish consumption with Dr. Laura Anderco, Georgetown University. Hi, Laura. How are you doing? Hi. All right. Well, first of all, why is the relationship between methylmercury and fish consumption important for health professionals to understand? Well, the primary route of exposure to methylmercury is through fish consumption. Because of the increasing popularity of fish as a source of protein, uh, largely because of its heart healthy benefits, a significant percentage of people in the U.S. may actually be at risk for methylmercury-induced health problems. Ironically, new research indicates that eating fish may actually increase one's risk for cardiovascular disease, such as heart attacks, since fish contains methylmercury. These health risks are important for health professionals to understand. What is mercury and methylmercury? Mercury is a metal that can be released into the environment, for example, through coal-fired plant processes or hazardous waste incineration. It enters the atmosphere and then drifts into water systems such as rivers, lakes, and wetlands. And once in the water, mercury is converted by bacteria into methylmercury, which is a neurotoxin. Uh, this means it causes damage to nerve tissue and the central nervous system. The methylmercury then accumulates up through the food chain so that smaller fish eating plankton that is contaminated with methylmercury are then consumed by the larger fish and it bioaccumulates as it moves up the food chain so that fish that live long and eat other fish can accumulate high levels of methylmercury in their tissue. In fact, the concentration of methylmercury in the top level of the food chain can reach a million times higher than the level in the water when it first enters. It's important to consider the type of fish a person eats when exploring their exposure to methylmercury and its health effects. What are the signs and symptoms of methylmercury toxicity? Well, low-dose exposures in adults can present themselves as symptoms such as ataxia, memory loss, paresthesia, which is a pins and needles feeling, blurry vision and diminished hearing. Um, prenatal exposure to methylmercury can cause lifelong adverse developmental and cognitive effects, even at low doses. Uh, this is because moms that eat fish and shellfish during pre pregnancy expose the fetus to methylmercury, so that children who are exposed in utero are an increased risk of poor performance on neural behavioral tests, such as those measuring attention, fine motor and language skills, for example. Methylmercury can also impact the neurological system throughout childhood, particularly when children are experiencing periods of growth and development. There's also some evidence that early life exposure may affect their cardiovascular, immune and reproductive systems. Finally, more severe health effects have been seen as a result of high poisoning events that include cerebral palsy, mental retardation, deafness, and blindness, which was evidenced in the Sentinel case that occurred in the 1950s in Minamata Bay, Japan. In April 1953, the harmony of Minamata is shattered by a strange discordant note, Kubio, the strange disease makes its appearance. First only small animals, cats and birds are afflicted, but then the first people. Soreness in the muscles and joints, tunnel vision, dizziness, numbness in the hands and feet, these are the symptoms of the strange cubio. Then the tremors and wasting begin. Many die. Survivors are deaf and blind or paralyzed. The disease soon reaches epidemic proportions. The authorities are baffled. Investigators seek an infectious disease that is found. It isn't until 1956, three years later, that a real clue to the cause of the Kubio is found. Dr. Hiyajimi Hosakawa, a researcher employed by the Kiso Chemical Company, makes a connection between the strange disease and the sea. 
Dr. Hosokawa establishes that of the 40 families affected by Kubio, 25 ate shellfish daily from Minamata Bay, and the remaining 15 families ate the same diet two to three times weekly. Hosokawa suspects that industrial pollution has contaminated the town's major food supply, Minamata Bay. That the Minamata disease, Kubio, is mercury poisoning, caused by discharge from the Kiso plant. Upon reporting his findings that the company has taken off the experiments. How do the Minamata poisonings occur? Most sources of industrial mercury pollution discharge relatively non-toxic compounds into waterways, a practice long considered safe. Why then the epidemic of the Kubio and mercury poisoning? The answer lies in natural occurrences of metabolism and complexings of toxins in the food chain. Microorganisms in the silt and water metabolize the dumped inorganic mercury, excreting it in the form of highly toxic mercury compounds. Then, through a process known as organic complexing, these compounds move through the food chain in ever higher concentrations. Quite simply, the bigger organisms eat the smaller ones, and the poisons pass from one body to the next, building up to dangerous levels in the larger animals. Throughout the late 50s and early 60s, many children are born, some healthy, some born blind or deaf or brain damaged or deformed. The parents, apparently untouched by Kubio, have no reason to suspect that they are links in a dangerous chain. A healthy adult can tolerate fairly large doses of mercury without apparent ill effect. Tons of mercury enter a bias for every year, from coal-fired power plants from fungicide as well as through industrial dumping. Not only seafood is affected. Mercury proliferates through our food chain and is present in meat, dairy products, and grains. What do we know today about methylmercury risks to the population in the United States? Well, it all started with Minamata Bay, and since then we have found this is not just an isolated issue, and that methylmercury is a concern even today. Uh, since that time, a number of studies have been conducted to explore the impact of fish consumption and mercury toxicity. For example, a recent national study in the U.S. found that over 600,000 children are exposed to unsafe levels of methylmercury in their mother's body. Almost 16% of U.S. women in childbearing age have high blood mercury concentrations. And of women who eat any fish at all, 50% consume more than safe levels. Also of concern are populations that consume high levels of fish, including many island and coastal communities, and ethnic groups that can have methylmercury exposure substantially higher than those reported among these national studies. I encourage listeners who are interested in learning more about these studies to review them on the fishfacts.org website.